March 1999, I was mayor of the capital city of Paraguay, and um, there was a pop popular uprising. There was a big protest in the central plaza, and democratic forces had assembled there to ask the president to resign because he had violated the constitution. And all of a sudden, they started shooting at the students. And uh, one by one, the students started falling being hit, uh, many wounded, eight died. So this is when I decided that uh, something had to be done and I just ordered my city engineer to bring in 30 garbage trucks and uh, 20 heavy equipments and surround the building of Congress. Everybody thought that we were going to be massacred. Even the American ambassador called me and told me, get out, out of the plaza because uh, we have information that they're gonna shoot you and they're gonna kill you. And we said, well, let them come because there has to be a time when people just say, this is the line, enough is enough. There were many deaths, but it was a major victory for democracy because the dictatorial forces could not take over Congress. Congress assembled the next day on, on a Saturday and the president resigned on Sunday. My name is Martin Burt and when my term as mayor was uh, finished in 2001, I decided that I wanted to dedicate my life to working with people and promoting economic self-reliance from the bottom up. I've realized that only public policy was not going to transform the society. I decided to return to the Paraguayan Development Foundation and continue working with the people, the small people, the poor people, the young, who I believe are the basis of any sustainable change in any society. In 2002, we were offered this agricultural school in Paraguay and we said sure let's take it and let's try to make it self-sufficient. In developing countries people are without any type of serious education they have no skills they have no knowledge but when you reverse that you begin to transform inhabitants of a country into citizens. When these citizens can make a decent living off the land, then they can start uh, regaining confidence in themselves and they start thinking of what is good, what is bad, what is productive for society and what is not. So what we need is to transform farmers into rural entrepreneurs. We envision a school where there are livestock, a dairy, chicken, pork, fish, that are run as a business with a break-even point and with the professor being in charge of its efficient business operation. Students learn in math class how to calculate the break-even point of their chicken coop, for example. And they have to know that it is not enough to have a chicken coop. You have to have a chicken coop that will produce 170 eggs a day that have to be sold at such a price at the local market to earn such and such amount in order to pay the professor. It is not just how to grow tomatoes. It is how to make money growing tomatoes because people have been growing potatoes and corn in Latin America for the past 15,000 years and they're all poor. So it is not a matter of knowing how to grow the crop or raise the animal. It is a matter of how to make money and how to be financially successful doing farming in our poor countries. Jorge Guerrero is a typical student of our agricultural school. He comes from a very large family. There are 19 children in his family. He's the tenth. You can understand the lack of opportunities that a child in these uh, circumstances has. In his case, his family was very fortunate 
that they could put him through ninth grade, at which time he entered our agricultural school. Y nosotros tenemos que producir de lo mejor, de mejor calidad, y el sistema de producción de la escuela es en forma orgánica. Y para eso producimos de, en forma biointensiva. Y de allí sacamos productos de buena calidad y cantidad. Es producir mayor cantidad en menor espacio posible. De la producción agropecuaria. Porque acá en, acá en Paraguay los pequeños productores, eso es lo que tiene el problema. No sabes sacar provecho, buen provecho, ganar plata de, de la pequeña agricultura. Y eso nosotros aprend, eh, aprendemos allá en la escuela. Everybody talks about eliminating poverty, but nobody talks about how do we put money in the poor's pockets. At our agricultural school, we say bluntly, we want to eliminate poverty, we want to teach the poor how to make money. There is a general thinking in the world that the poor can never help themselves and that economic self-reliance is not possible in Latin America. Economic self-reliance is not possible in Africa or in India. And we have to change that. Every poor village in the world can have an economic self-sufficient agricultural school to teach its young farmers. And once you have rural entrepreneurs making money, they can become leaders of society and start a system by which people regain power. It's not a matter of expecting things from the top down, but really building a country from the bottom up. <laughs>